Hi, I'm Greg Marcus, and the pastor of Imperial Valley Christian Center, and this is our Sunday morning church service Bible study. Study the Bible with us, moment, whatever you want to call it, via the internet. Thank you so much for being here with us. We really, 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 really appreciate it. Hallelujah. Anyway, right now we're talking about, you know, that the word righteousness doesn't mean what we think it means. The word, as it's used in the Bible, doesn't mean what we think it means. And so I'm giving you different examples. I started off by using, by showing you that righteousness was used in several instances, you know, Matthew 6, 1 and Acts chapter 10. And uh, the, probably the most uh, powerful one is, is 1 Corinthians chapter, I, I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, hallelujah, where the word righteousness uh, the Greek word dikaiousune is used to mean the Hebrew word sedekah, which in that uh, context means giving to the poor, <laughs> hallelujah, which righteousness never means. Then we looked at one in Galatians chapter 2 and 3, where Paul's talking about, not about being justified, but about receiving the blessings promised to the people of God, hallelujah. That the word there, justified, doesn't mean uh being right before God, hallelujah, but you can tell from the context he's talking about the blessings, about being free from the curse of the law and that kind of stuff. And then we looked at uh, Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 17, where it's talking about the righteousness of God, that in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, is manifested, uh, is seen at work. And I was showing you that, that what it's talking about there is about God's power for working miracles and helping people and healings, all those healings and miracles that Jesus did, that the disciples did, that the apostles did, that the apostle Paul did, all those miracles and healings and that kind of, that's the righteousness of God at work. That's God's acts of loving kindness visible in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As one man put it, it's synonymous with what Jesus calls the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Those two mean the same thing. And so we're looking at different ones. And right now, I want to look at this one, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. I just want you to see, I'm just showing you different examples. So you can see, hopefully from the context, you can see that righteousness doesn't mean what we think it means in the in the Bible. Hallelujah. So let's read here, Romans chapter five verse 17 so this is the apostle paul speaking here and he says for if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man how much more will those who receive god's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he's talking about Adam. For if by the trespass of the one man, talking about Adam, death reigned. Hallelujah. As a result of Adam turning away from God, death became the king of the earth, or Satan became the king of the earth. And as a result, uh, death began to reign on the earth. Hallelujah. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more? And so now he's comparing that, what happened when Adam turned away from God, hallelujah, and uh, followed Satan, uh, <laughs> became a, a servant of Satan. <laughs> you could say made Satan his Lord or something like that, but he definitely made Satan Lord over all the earth. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? In Luke chapter 4, when uh, Satan is tempting Jesus, he says to him, uh, he says, uh, if you'll bow down and worship me, Satan says to Jesus, if you'll bow down and worship me, I will give unto you all the, the kingdoms of the world. Hallelujah. He showed him all the kingdoms of his you bow down and worship me. Uh, I will deliver these to you for they have been delivered to me, hallelujah. Well, who delivered all the kingdoms of the world unto Satan? Well, Adam did. And so as a result, Satan is the ruler of this world. So Paul talks about when Jesus appeared to him, 
uh, that he told them that he was sending him to the Gentiles to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God or from the authority or the reign of Satan unto God. Uh, Peter talks about in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how Jesus of Nazareth winning, went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, or really you could read that, all who were under the oppression or the tyranny of the devil. So Adam turned it over to Satan. As a result, death began to reign on the earth. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more? And then when Jesus, now he's comparing it to what Jesus has done for us. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace, abundant provision, of, who receive God's abundant provision and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. One translation, says, I think it's Weymouth's translation, says reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death reigned because of what Adam turned everything over to Satan. Hallelujah. Now Jesus has conquered the devil. And as a result, we, those who follow Jesus, who receive from him, who uh, take from him abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, hallelujah, will reign in life, hallelujah, Hall through the one man, Jesus Christ. So we're focusing in, though, right now on just this phrase, the gift of righteousness. Those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness are the ones who are going to reign in life, hallelujah, through the one man, Jesus Christ. So traditionally, we read that, and we think it's talking about receiving, being righteous, hallelujah, receiving, you know, now I'm righteous, now I can reign in life, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I want to show you that the, it's not talking about that, but it's talking about God's gift of tzedakah, hallelujah, God's gift of his acts of loving kindness. And we see an example of that here in Psalm 72. Verse one, I'm reading from the NIV, and it says here, endow the king with your justice. The King James Version says, give the king your justice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, let me read that just so we can be sure here. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Give Thy righteousness unto the king's son is what I want you to see. Give thy God, they're praying to God. Oh God, give thy righteousness unto the king's son. Can you see the gift of righteousness? That's what I want you to see in this passage is this gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. That Paul refers to over in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. He talks about those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of right shall reign in life. And here it shall reign as kings in life. And here's an actual king, hallelujah, in this Psalm 72. And they're praying for this king, talking about Solomon. David apparently praying for the king or Solomon praying for himself. Endow the king with your Justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. Give the king, in the King James, give the king thy judgments, O God, thy righteousness unto the king's son. That word righteousness is the Hebrew word sedekah. So give thy sedekah unto the king's son. Endow the king with your justice, O God. Who's, who's justice? God's justice. The royal son with your Righteous, who's righteous? Your righteous, who? God's righteousness. And thou, the royal son, with God said it, hallelujah, hallelujah. All I want you to see for right now is, we'll see, there's the gift of righteousness. There's an example of the gift of righteousness, hallelujah. They're praying for the king to receive the gift of God said it, They're praying for the king to receive the gift of God said it, of God's righteousness, you know, we're mistranslated, but the gift of God said it, God, the gift of God's acts of loving kindness. And what happens, 
when this king receives the gift of God, Sedekah, the gift of God's acts of loving kindness. What do I want you to say? I want you to say that righteousness means God's acts of loving kindness or the acts of loving kindness. Uh, that's, a, that's all I'm, it doesn't mean righteousness the way we use it. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean what we think righteousness means. It's talking about these God's acts of loving kindness. So, so I'm showing you here that uh, this example of God's righteousness, God said it, God, that's what the word is that's being translated righteous in here. God said it, God, being given to the king's son. Hallelujah. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. Hallelujah. So we see an example of God said it, God, being gifted to someone. And then we look back at the verse we're looking at, and he talks about they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Who, who's it talking about here in Psalm 72 who receives the gift of right, the gift of God's sedekah, the gift of God's acts of loving? Who's it? The king's son. So he's reigning over here, right? Hallelujah. How do they want him to reign? With this gift of God's righteousness, this gift of God's sedekah, this gift of God's acts of loving kind. That's how they want him to reign. Give him your righteousness so he'll reign with your gifts of sedekah. Hallelujah. And then Paul over there is talking about that they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they'll be reigning too. Hallelujah. How are they going to reign? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So let's see what happens when God gives him his righteousness, why they're praying for this, why they want God to give him his righteousness. So let's read it there. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness, the, literally the word sedekah. May he judge your people in righteousness in sedekah, your afflicted ones. I think in the other translation it says the poor with justice, hallelujah. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. Lots of times one of the problems we have understanding this is that we think of judges as being bad. May he judge your people. And notice we say, judge me, O oh God. Sometimes we'll read in Psalm, judge me, or God will judge the earth. And we have, oh my God, here comes God. Here comes the judge. He's going to let us have it. He's going to hit us. He's going to punish us. He's going to give us what we deserve. Hallelujah. 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 But in the, in the, in the Bible, judgment usually is a good thing. Hallelujah. Remember in the book of Judges, who I always like to say, who was the most famous judge in the book of Judges? Who was the most famous judge in the book? It was Samson. Samson was the most famous. You remember what Samson did? He delivered the people of Israel from their enemies. He defeated them. He was a strong warrior and he would defeat them. He was a judge. Hallelujah. And you read all the judges in there. They weren't going around punishing the people of Israel. Oh, here comes the judge. He's going to punish us. Oh, no, watch out. May he judge your people in righteousness. May he judge your people in Sedekah. Doesn't mean like sometimes we think, oh, he's coming to punish. He's going to come and give them what they deserve. No, it means he's coming to deliver them. You can tell that because it says in the next part, may he judge your people in righteousness in Sedekah and God's acts in acts of loving kind your afflicted ones with just the poor. He's coming to judge the poor. Doesn't mean he, ah, oh, you evil poor, you lazy old bumps. You're getting what you deserve. Hallelujah. No, he's coming to deliver them from their poverty. That's the judgment he's bringing. That's the judgment that they're praying for this king, king to have. The righteousness of God, the justice of God, the judgment of God. They're praying for him. And what will that do? It'll make the poor not be poor anymore. Hallelujah. That'd be a good thing if our kings made the poor not be poor anymore. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Hallelujah. Verse three, may, uh, what I want you to see is here is verse one, they're praying that God would endow, that, uh, that God would endow the king with his justice, that the royal son with his sedekah, 
with the tzedakah of God, that God would endow the king with the tzedakah of God. And now in these verses, we're going to see what that would mean if God would endow the king with his tzedakah. Why are we looking at this? Because we want to know what tzedakah means. Because tzedakah is the word translated righteousness here. Hallelujah. Well, what does tzedakah mean? Does it mean what we think of a righteous? Endow the king with your righteousness. Let him punish the wicked. Or some craziness like that. No, we're going to see. Verse 3. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people. When the king is endowed with God's justice, when the royal son is endowed with God's righteousness, what happens? Prosperity comes to the people. That sounds like God's acts of loving kindness to me. Endow him with God's acts of, with your acts of loving kindness. The hills, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of tzedakah, the fruit of God's acts of love. What would be the fruit of God's acts of loving kind? Deliverance, rescue, prosperity, the blessings that God promises to his people in the Bible. The blessings he promised to Abraham, the blessings he promised to Isaac, the blessings he promised to Jacob, the blessings he promised through Moses to the children of Israel. Hallelujah. That's the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of God's tzedakah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4, may he de defend the afflicted among the people. What's he going to do when he receives God's justice? What's the king going to do when he receives God's justice? What's the king going to do when he receives God's righteous God's tzedakah, God's acts of loving kindness? What's he going to do? Verse 4, may he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. Who's going to get in trouble? May he crush the oppressor, the one who's oppressing the poor, the one who's oppressing the afflicted, the man who makes his riches from stealing from the poor, hallelujah, the man who has become rich by afflicting the poor, hallelujah, what's going to happen? May he crush the oppressor, verse 5, may he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations, may he be like rain falling on a mown field, a moan field like showers watering the earth. In his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. And it keeps going like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here we're seeing an example in Psalm 72. Paul, Paul said over there in Romans chapter 5, he said, They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Hallelujah, by one Jesus. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of shall reign in life by one Jesus, by the authority of Jesus. Hallelujah. And what's their reign? And what I want you to see is that when it talks about the gift of righteousness, it's talking about this same thing. Here's somebody getting ready to reign. He's a king, uh, the son of the king. Hallelujah. The royal son is getting ready to reign. And what are they praying for him? Hallelujah. Endow him. Give him your tzedakah. Hallelujah. And then over in Romans 5, 17, what do we see? Somebody who's getting ready to reign. Hallelujah. Uh, who's going to reign there? They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the gift of tzedakah, the gift of God's acts of loving kindness. It's, so it's kind of paralleling this thing to me. It suggests Paul was, this is what Paul had in mind when he was writing over there in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Hallelujah. Let's turn back there. So we saw what happens when the gift of tzedakah, of gift of God's tzedakah is at work. What happens? The poor are prospered. The people prosper. Hallelujah. The evil, the, the wicked who are oppressing the poor, the oppressors, what happens to them? They're the ones that get over the head, hit over the head with the baseball bat. Hallelujah. So let's go back to verse 17. Let me show you some another little piece of this. Hallelujah. What am I? I'm trying to convince you this word righteousness does not mean righteousness. Hallelujah. But it means God's tzedakah. In this case, the tzedakah of God, the acts of loving kindness, but talking about God's acts of loving kindness. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned 
through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness, hallelujah, reign in life hallelujah, through the one man, Jesus Christ. I want, all I want you to see, I'm just trying to put that word righteousness doesn't mean what we think it means. It's not talking about being right before God. It's not talking about having met the standard that God has set out. It's not talking about being this perfect people. It's not talking about being declared perfect. Holla, anything. It has nothing to do with those ideas. What's it talking about? It's talking about acts of loving kindness. The Hebrew word tzedakah, acts of loving kindness. In this case, particularly God's acts of loving kindness. We just read over in Romans 117 about the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, is seen at work when the gospel is preached. Uh, what were those? What was it that we saw at work when the gospel was preached? Healings, deliverances, rescues, hallelujah, miracles, signs, wonders, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the righteousness of God. Okay, much more than will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the abundant provision of grace for a second. So we have this idea. Someday I'm going to teach on grace. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you know, I'm getting to the end of the road here. Hallelujah. So maybe I will never teach on grace. So let me tell you this, what grace is. Grace means literally, you know, we like as evangelicals, we like, oh, well, grace is, is, you know, uh, uh, unmerited favor. Hallelujah. I mean, that may apply or whatever, you know, that may be a okay definition, but a clearer definition is this. This is what grace is. This is the, and some Bibles translate it this way. This is the way the Hebrew uh, equivalent word to seed is translated. Loving kindness. So let me read it to you that. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of loving kindness? Loving kindness is what God is all about. That's the part we miss when we focus on having to be righteous, when having to be justified, when having to be perfect, when having to never miss it. We miss God's loving kindness. God is on your side. He wants it to go well with you. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health. He, I don't care what all these anti-prosperity nitwits are saying. Hallelujah. I go by what Becky Marcus says. And she says this. She says, well, God's our father. Wouldn't any father want their children to be prosperous and successful? Hallelujah. Exactly. It's not time about, it's time about the loving kindness of God. Hallelujah. Well, those who receive God's abundant provision of grace, of God's loving kindness, and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what I want you to see here is that this grace, this loving kindness, isn't just a passive thing. Hallelujah. This abundant provision of grace, this gift of God said it, hallelujah, that's going to allow them to reign in life. Uh, the people who receive that, the people who receive God's abundant provision of grace, the people who receive the gift of God said it, like the king received the gift of God, like they were praying the king would receive the gift of God said it, hallelujah, they're going to be able to reign in life, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is this uh, oh, <laughs> abundant provision of grace? This abundant provision of loving kindness? We tend to think of loving kindness as sort of passive, as something that of God sitting, oh, yes, yes, you have favor. Yes, you have favor, but it never does anything. Hallelujah. It's not active grace. It's just, yes. You know, like sometimes you run into people and say, well, I love everybody. I love, but they never do anything for every, anybody. Hallelujah. Love is doing. <laughs> not, oh, I feel love for everyone. Oh, what do you do to your neighbor? Hallelujah. That old witch? <laughs> That's not love. That's not grace. That's not God's 
That's not loving kindness. Hallelujah. Okay, so what do I want you to see? I want you to see, oh, let me see. Oh, my goodness. I want you to see that loving kindness isn't passive. It's not just a feeling God has, but it's active. It does something. Hallelujah. So over in Ephesians chapter 2, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, when uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about us being seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that in ages to come, uh, he might uh, show upon us or demonstrate upon us his loving kindness. Hallelujah. His grace. The abundance of his grace. Well, what is that abundance of Oh, yeah, God loves us. That's why we're here sitting on the throne with Jesus. Hallelujah. When I read that, I was thinking, well, why are we sitting on the throne with Jesus? Huh? Just so you would love us? Just so you could see? Oh, look, God loves those guys so much. He put them up there on the throne. No, the abundant provision of grace uh, that it's talking about there in Ephesians chapter 2 is so that we can do the works, hallelujah, that God has set forth ahead of time for us to do, hallelujah. We're supposed to be doing something. We're supposed to be taking God's loving kindness to the world. We're supposed to be taking God's righteousness, not God's standard of being right, but God's acts of loving kindness to the world. That's what part of it means. That's what it means to be a Christian, to take God's loving kindness to the world, to take God's righteousness, God's acts of loving kindness, God said it to the world, hallelujah, and then do what? It says here, Hallelujah, shall reign in life, or it probably should be, shall reign with life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what we do in the name of Jesus, through the one man, Jesus Christ. We go out into the world where before Satan and death were ruling and destroying people's lives. Now we go in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, bringing God's acts of loving kindness, bringing abundance of God's loving kindness to the world, using that to reign in the world and cause life to come to people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Unfortunately, I'm out of time, but I'm not finished, so please come back next week. Thank you so much for being here with us and participating in these lessons, growing with us, developing with us, hallelujah. If you stick with us, it'll get into you. If you'll stick with it, it will get into your heart, hallelujah, hallelujah. The message will get into your heart, and then you'll be able to receive the abundance of God's grace, the righteousness of God, hallelujah, the gift of the right so that you can go into the world and reign and cause life, hallelujah. Instead of uh, uh, when Adam caused death to be going out in the world because he turned everything over to Satan, now Jesus is in charge, hallelujah. And we're his ambassadors going out causing life, to come into the world, <laughs> hallelujah, but you got to stick with it, mm-hmm. hallelujah, anyway, thank you so much for being with us, uh, if you want to contribute to keep this ministry going, you can do so at our website, www.ivchristiancenter.com, Com, by clicking on the feed the ox button, and you'll be able to give a donation through PayPal, thank you so much for those of you who continue supporting us, allowing us to do this work, We really, 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 really appreciate it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.